בכבוד. יהיו פרמישן. קורס דיסיס פאשה, שנרמץ most important פרשה, הסיקסטי מצוות. Recording in progress. זה היילייט, זה ואהבת עליה אחר כמוך. סימפל אקספנישן, love yourself as much as you love yourself. Love your friend as much as, much as you love yourself. It's, I don't know if it's very hard to achieve such, such a thing. If you learn Musa and Gemara, they teach you. You have to love everybody. And it's not so hard. Nevertheless, Amzah B'Akiva says this is Klag, excuse me, the Klag Gadol B'Torah, something very, very big, might be the most important thing. Comes the Gemara and tells us how important it is. If Goy came to convert, and he came to Shammai, one of the biggest we had, I asked him, I would like to convert, but I have no patience to learn all the halachot, the mitzvot. Can you teach me that you, can be, you will be able to convert me in one second while I'm sitting on one foot? <coughs> the Gemara says, Shammai pushed him away. He went to Hillel. And Hillel told, me, told him, yeah, it's very easy. He took the statement of Tachak HaMoha, that statement is a positive statement. It says, me, love your friend as much as you love yourself. He told, he told the Goy, I tell you what, don't do anything that you hate to somebody else. It's not exactly the same. This is much easier than that. But he told me, that's the whole Torah. Now go and learn, excuse me. Excuse me. Now go learn Torah, that's the whole thing. It's even easier. You have to be an animal to do something bad to your friend. This is, this is not something so important. It's, literally, this is a translation of the Rabbi Ziel in the Targum on the sentence of the Torah. The Rabbi HaKamocha, Rabbi Ziel translates it the way he learned translated to the Goy. So don't do bad to someone, something that you don't like should be done to you. It's very easy, it's nothing. Of course, it's a lot of things in the Torah are easy, but it comes up here, it's the Klal Gadol Torah, so he understood that that's what Rabbi Akiva meant as well. And so he told the Goy, you do this, you're a Jew. It's just, just because I don't do bad things to somebody, I become a Jew. What does it mean exactly? How do you become a Jew because you don't do bad things? Even if that statement would have been the thing, to say that's the whole Torah. That's the whole Torah. It's true. Torah wants us to, to be better people. You should become a better person. But still, to say, that's it, nothing. Don't have to do nothing. How important Dr. HaKamocha is. The Gemara says, the Medea Rabbi Akiva died. In the Sfirat HaOmer. In the Simei Adin Berachamim, the Ari says, it's a very dangerous days. They are very dangerous days, Omer. I said, what happened? The Medea Rabbi Akiva died. 24,000. Students died, they are Olam Shamim, the Gemara says. But there's nobody else after that. And the reason is, the Gemara says, Lona go kavod zebaze. This is something very, very bad thing they did to each other. Because they did not respect each other so much. What does it mean exactly? So because you don't respect somebody, you die. You don't die. It doesn't say they embarrassed somebody or did bad thing. Just did not give respect to everybody. 
a person did not give respect to his colleague. No nagu kavod zem vaze. For this he don't die. Somebody doesn't give respect to the eyes. Maybe it's a mitzvah. It all depends. If you're in the same level as the other guy, you don't have to do anything. But to die for that? I don't die for such a thing. The statement by itself, if really the translation of that sentence means love your friend as much as you love yourself, the correct Hebrew should have been Ve'avta et re'achakamocha Love your friend, the way you love yourself. But it, the Torah doesn't say that. It says Ve'avta le re'acha Love the your friend. Love the. What do you mean love the? Must be, it's not just love your friend. It must be something much more deeper than that. What Hashem expects us to, to do. How many experiments was like this? If we start from the Sefer the Torah tells us the creation of mankind. It was the people who took some soil, mixed it with some water, and made a form of a person, and blew an Ishama inside the Lama and he got up. Then the Torah tells us the explanation of the Gemara, at the time Arishon saw that every animal, every creature has a mate. Excuse me. Excuse me. He doesn't have a mate. He asked HaKadosh Baruch Hu, let's have a mate. <coughs> the way that he explains, HaKadosh Baruch brought him an angel. And told him, this is your mate. And Arishon rejected it. I don't want it. They all went and got married to the Satan. Then Torah tells us what happened. The Kadosh Baruch Hu decided he's going to do an operation on Zama Rishon, and he's going to create a mate for Zama Rishon. Well, the question is, if Hashem decided to create a mate, Hashem should have done the same thing: take some soil, mix it with water, and blow the blow the shama inside. And you need to blow the shama. Torah says no. Because we put Adam Arishon to sleep, and while he was sleeping, Hashem took a piece from his back and he created Chava. Created a lady. And again, the question is, why did Hashem do such a thing, and why really Hashem has to tell us in the Torah that? Why does Hashem write in the Torah the way he created Chaba was that way? The Torah is not a history book and it's really, it's really irre irrelevant. How did Hashem create Chaba? The way Hashem created, he created them. No. You should know Chaba was created from a part of Adam Arjon while he was sleeping. Continues the Torah. After they woke up, after Chaba and Sodom woke up, and the episode of the snake came, and convince Chava to eat from the tree. And of course she gave it a Marishon. And after they ate, and Chava gave to all the animals as well, whatever it means, Hashem arrived. Hashem arrived and asked the Marishon, where are you? I said, I heard you coming and I hide myself. I'm embarrassed, I hide myself. So Hashem asked him a question, did you eat from the tree? Did you eat from what I told you not to eat? And Adam Arishon said, my wife gave it to me. Comes a Kadosh Baruch Hu and curses Adam Arishon, 10 curses. And the opening statement why Hashem is so upset, Hashem tells him, Yan, why did you listen to your wife? You didn't listen to your wife. But that's not the point. The point is that I ate. Hashem doesn't say that. Hashem does not tell Adam Roshon. It's true, Hashem continues. And you listen to your wife and you ate. Okay. But listen to your wife, it doesn't matter. 
the command, the mitzvah, what Tatama should hand the Gemara says is not read from Esadar. You ate, Hashem said, you know, since you ate, this is the ten curses. Instead, Hashem saying that, Hashem said, you listen to your wife? I listen to your wife. By the way, by the way, in Kedosh Baruch Hu, this was a Pikuach Nefesh, but I listen to my wife. Ramin tell us, Let Chava took four by four. Not two by four, four by four. And start to hit at Amar he didn't want to eat. He didn't want to eat. He said, if you don't eat, I kill you. He started banging on him, and he ate. And the Gemara says, why did she do it? The Gemara said, since she was touched by the snake, and the snake, and the snake idea in his head was jealousy, so now Chava got jealousy. And after she ate, she realized what's going to happen now, she'll die, because Adam HaRashon told her that you'll die if you eat. And then Adam HaRashon will marry somebody else. So she doesn't want him to marry somebody else. She's so jealous. So she's going to force him to eat, and they're going to die together. But she forced him. She hit him. She could have killed him. The Gemara says that Amosha and Chava were created as 20 years old, not as babies. And she was a Jabba, healing him. So it's Pikuach Nefesh. So, Hashem, what do you want from me? Why listen to my wife? Listen. He was, oh, she hit me. So you say, why I listen to my wife? Because you listen to your wife, you get cursed? No. What is really the, the secret that Hashem tells the whole story in the Torah? I mean, tell us like this. In the Navi, there's a story about Levi the Melech, the son of Shalom. He wanted to kill him. He wanted to become a king. He wanted to spot his head. The name of Shalom is a very bad name. Nobody should name his child of Shalom. Very bad name. And David was running away from him, and finally, Somebody killed Shalom, and they went and they told David, so, Baruch Hashem, your enemy is dead. Of course it's a, a son, of course it's a son. And the father has mercy on his son, even his son is very wicked, maybe, maybe, maybe. So the Gemara tells us that Shalom, when he died, his neshama, whatever it was, went down to Gehenom to the lowest level. Gehenom has seven floors. The lowest of the lowest is called Short Tachti. It's the worst people out there enjoying over there the jacuzzi in the lowest floor. This is Gemara Avshalom went all the way down. He's so mean and bad. What he wanted to do to his father, he went to the Gehenom. David Amir had to walk a Polish. And the Gemara says, when he heard that Avshalom is dead, he said eight times the word, Beni, 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 my son, my son, my son. Seven times, every time he says, my son, his root of David, he picked him up one floor. And after he came out of Gehenom, all together, every man wants him in Ganedem, he said, number eight, Beni, again. The secret behind it is because it says your son. You don't want a son to spend his life in Gehenom. So you try to be like, but this is like a who put him in Gehenom for a reason. With all the respect to David Amelech, if he deserved it, so what do you mean you're trying to take him out? Why are you trying to get him out? It's better for him to be in Gehenom, he should have a kapara. You know, he will come after 11 months, after 12 months, he'll come out. Then he'll be purified. Maybe he'll go to Ganedin. David Amelech picked him up on the spot. He was in Gehenom for a few minutes. Then we picked him up. In his statement, not only that, and Rabbi says, David Amelech, when he was crying, he was saying, Bni, Bni, my son, he said, Mi ten multi tachtecha. I wish I would have died instead of you. Instead of you? What do you mean? He was trying to kill you. He was a murderer. What do you mean you're going to be instead of him? 
While he was crying, he was saying it. Let me explain to us like this. The Mishnah tells us in the Mishnah that when a coroner got he sees Shiva, he mourns on one of his beloved. He sits on the chair, and everybody had to, sit, had to sit on the floor and comfort him. When they comfort him, they tell him, very sorry on your loss. We would like to be your kapara. We should be, should be your kapara. You know, the slang it. A lot of people say, and, and Persian, and says, I'm your kapara, I'm your kapara, I'm your kapara, I'm your kapara. And he brought us in. What is be, what's be, be behind it? I'm your kapara. What do you mean, your kapara? I said, the Quran is the Quran. I said, the Quran is the Quran. It's not just a, a slang that the person. The people of the Quran is the Quran. It's a shame that, that, that you know somebody. We should have been instead of that person. They should not. Sit over here on, on the chair more. You see, this is uh, something that was invented, something in Shamayim. Gemara tells us like this something. In the Shamot of the people uh, from different windows in Shamayim, if you may say. Some people are very similar. And they come from the same window. There's a lot of windows upstairs. It has to do with the time of a person who was born, and the place, and uh, the father and the mother combination, the names and, and the stars of the father and the mother. And then you, you can find somebody almost identical to you. Comes the Gemara tells us, Hashem, somebody is sick. And people come to visit him. That person, the Gemara says, which is called Bengi Law, that you have a very similar condition to that sick person, you come and visit him, you will pick up one sixtieth of the sickness. I Means the sick, what you see, some people you know have had a very bad sickness, got out of the sickness. Some people, no. They say, well, people pray for him. It's true, it's true. Everything is true. Everything helps. But if you may say the most thing that helps, the most thing that helps is to visit the person that's sick by people that are on the same horoscope in him. <coughs> and you have, you have a few people like this, they so-called, they take, they take out the sickness from the person. When Mabila said that Yosef came to visit Yaakov Abinu, and Yaakov Abinu was in bed, very sick, all of a sudden Yosef came, Yeshev Alamitai, Yaakov Abinu sat on the bed. He said to Mabila, what, what, what do you talk about to teach you? Torah tells to teach you. Yaakov sat, Yaakov lies, who cares about it? It's not a Torah. No, Torah teaches you the secret. Because Yosef and Yaakov were in the, the same Neshama. So when Yosef arrived and just came inside the room, Already one sixtieth of the sickness of Yaakov vaporized. The of said, Yaakov feels better, feel better. What happened? Feel better. What happened? Somebody came to visit you? Yeah. Somebody came to visit me. He picks up one sixtieth of, of the sickness. You can have, you know, uh, 60 people that come to visit a sick person, he's going to jump out of bed. But each one will get only one sixtieth. It doesn't have anything, it doesn't have anything to do with him. So when sickness, the sickness doesn't have any impact on a person. But let's look at the Gemara. Hashem made such a thing. Why does Hashem make such a thing? What does it mean exactly? So you, go to visit, you go visit somebody, and all of a sudden, the guy feels better because you accepted <coughs> one sixtieth of the sickness. What does it mean exactly? So more than above, Chachamim tell us you should know what really is on this world. That's what really happened on our Sinai. The year in Sfirat Omer. Of course, Sfirat Omer means correcting our habits. 
and try, try to become a better person. I said, what is the goal? The goal is, of course, Chagash Shavuot. Hashem gave us the Torah. What happened with Chagash Shavuot? Yechan Shem Yisrael Neged Ha'ar, the Gemara tells us, Yisrael Yisrael arrived to Al-Sinai, they became one unit. He said, Nasev Nishma, can you imagine? Everybody realized they will do what Hashem is going to tell us to, to do later even, we're going to accept everything. Ve'lev Echad Ki Yishachad, it says, one unit. What does it mean exactly one unit? What, what, what do you mean? What did you feel exactly on Al Sinai? What did you feel? Maybe one, one unit. What does it mean one unit? You know, in Israel, there was a guy, a soldier died. Oh, the father was very, very depressed to go to Kamkanevsky. Otto Pchaim Kanievsky walks inside the door. So Pchaim said, tell him that his son is next to Abshum Mayochai all the way up. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? Okay, maybe yes, okay. Maybe he just wants to comfort him. That's the guy who thinks that. Uh, he goes aside, he says, okay, thank you very much. He goes to fill up gas in the car. Somebody in the gas station tells him, are you the father of that soldier? You know, he's next to Abshum Mayochai. Maybe it was a real Navi. And with Shlomo Zalman Weyobach, one of the biggest we had in our generation, he said, when somebody is sick, people go to Kotel, people go to Herimenu, people go to, I go to Har Herzl, where the soldiers are buried. I pray next to the soldiers' monument. Because the Gemara said you should know the biggest thing and the highest place in Shamayim is people that want to give their life for somebody else. A soldier. Because you say to go to war, what is go to war? I mean, risks himself. That's the biggest thing for Hashem. Why is the biggest thing? Because this is really the translation of the Chakamocha. I think Chakamocha means like this. Like it says, Bechol Hashem Lerecha, it means a person. Man, he knows somebody else suffers, really should say to himself, I rather should have that, not him. That's, that's the hardest thing, but that's the level. That's the level. It's not love your friend the way you love yourself. It's, I don't say, I don't think it's so easy, but it's not, it's not the biggest thing in the world. But the biggest thing is that you want to accept what somebody else says. And the reason for that, it goes in the Torah. It's not because Hashem expects you to do it. But this is a person has to know. <clears throat> the words goes by, by the nation. That when Hashem created us, we are one unit. One unit means like this. Let's say the police caught somebody, he stole. So, put him in jail. I said, listen, I put him in jail. He stole. I said, who stole? You. No, not my, my hand. My hand stole. So punish my hand. Why I have to be in, in, in jail? I don't understand you. I didn't do something. My hand did. Put my hand. You can put him in jail. Okay, so let's see. Let's, let's try to figure it out. But you can't put me in jail because I did something with my hand. My hand deserves a punishment. The answer is what? The hand is part of the body. It means it's not your hand. It's true, the hand did it. But it means the whole body was involved. That's the secret of Am Yisrael. It's not him, it's not me. Let's say we are one body, we are one unit. So it means if somebody suffers, it means I suffer. That's the way you have to feel it. It's not just, you know, a, a statement. The person has to have inside himself to feel sorrow for somebody or to try to put himself in that situation that he really realized it's not him, it's me. I got the problem. I got the problem. That's what the Gemara says about Mashiach. The Gemara says Mashiach suffers and he's sick. He sits at the gate of Rome and Rabbi Shua went to see him and asked him, when are you coming? I'm coming today. 
So he didn't come. He didn't come. I asked him the next day, why didn't you come? He said, no, no. I would have, I would have came. But in Mikolot Ishma, if you listen to Hashem, which part do you don't listen to Hashem? Which part do you listen to Hashem? Which part do you don't listen? At least I try to listen to everything. Who didn't listen? What does it mean? They don't listen to Hashem. It means if there is one guy that doesn't do right, it means I don't do right. That's what it means. And I don't do right, so the Mashiach will never come. He'll never come. Let's say Gemara says Mashiach will come if or that all of us will be 100% or all of us not, not good. The tragedy is Hashem will have to fix us. But the goal is what I have come over. Let's say Gemara that the Nabi says Rabbi says that if we are one unit, Hashem waves everything. And what's the secret behind? That's what, what we started before with in Adam Rishon. With all the respect, our great, great grandfather Adam Rishon is innocent. His wife forced him to eat. Perfect. When Hashem asked, "Where did you eat?" What you should say? What did you say? See, you blame somebody. That's a problem in life. Blaming somebody, this is the opposite of Hakka Moha. It's still your wife, yeah, right? She did something wrong, right? right? You can't blame her. Okay. You have to take the responsibility for her to feel that you did it. It's not she, it's you. Because she's part, that's why Kadosh Bahu describes the creation of Chava, not by making a new Chava from scratch. The, on purpose, Akadosh Baruch said, writing the Torah, puts Adam HaRoshon on anesthesia, Hashem takes part of Adam HaRoshon out, and says, this is going to be your wife. So what do you mean, wife? It's like your finger, right? So if your finger does something that you don't like, what are you going to do to your finger? You're going to bang your finger? No. By mistake, you scratch yourself. By mistake, by mistake, you tripped. Your foot, so-called, did not walk straight. Or you didn't see something with your eye. You're going to punch your eye. It's never impossible. If your wife is part of you, what do you mean you fight with your wife? Oh, your husband is part of you. What do you mean you fight with him? You don't understand. Hashem on purpose did it in the Torah. That all the descendants of Adam and you all came from one unit. From Adam and Chava. It's not saying him. Him is you. You and him. It's the same thing. And it's Hashem, Hashem tells Adam Roshon, Shabbat HaKol Ishtecha. You listen to, you know, you said what? Your wife gave it to you? That's your problem, right? That's your problem. It's not my wife. No. It's you. You have to have this in your mind. Is nobody does something. You do everything. Somebody suffers, it means I suffer. It's not he had a tragedy. No, I had a tragedy. That's what the, the, the people tell the Kohen Gadol. Listen, it's a shame you see Shiva. I want, we want to see Shiva for you. It's a shame happened to you. It's never happened to me. He said, why are you talking like this? Why are you talking like this? That's the way a person should feel. They say it was, I don't know, he came in Yerushalayim. His name was Rabbi Sazarman Meltzer. His wife had a problem with the foot. He came to the doctor. So he walked with his wife to the doctor. And the doctor says, yes. So, this, so Rabbi Sazarman said, our foot, our feet hurt us. What is excuse me? You and your wife both have a problem? He said, yeah, we both have a problem. He says, okay, let me see the foot. So he said to his wife, show him the foot. I said, I thought you have a problem also. I said, you don't understand. Me and her is one. When her foot hurts, it means my foot hurts. And literally, I mean it. It's not, my wife doesn't feel well. I don't feel well. That's the goal of life. That's why after That's how hard it is to achieve it. That's what the Akiva said in his last moment of his life. While the Romans in Marshima were coming his, his, his flesh, and says, Shema Yisrael, after Shema Yisrael, I love Hashem, I love Hashem with everything. What do you mean, you love Hashem with everything? Rashi says, 
אבל אחר כמוך, it's true, love your friend. And you know who is your real friend? השם. ואחר ורע אביך אל תעזוב, למען אחי ורעי, שנו השם considers himself a friend of yours. השם is a friend of yours. ואת אחר כמוך, love השם. What do you mean love השם? It means like this. Anything that Hashem wants me to do, I do it. Not because Hashem commanded me. Because it's like Hashem wants to do it, I do it for Him. Or I restrain myself by doing it. Because He is going to have a pleasure for me. And this is His pleasure. I work for Hashem's pleasure. My pleasure is to give pleasure to Hashem. That's my goal in life. This is, this is the positive way. Love, whatever your friend has, you should feel the same thing for yourself. If chas v'shalom is sorrow, v'shalom sorrow. Sadness, sadness. If Baruch Hashem something good, I feel for his happiness the way it is my happiness. It's not Baruch Hashem you have something. You have to feel inside happiness because your friend has happiness. I am happy not for you. I'm happy for us because I am happy. part of you, you're part of me. It's the hardest thing in the world. That's what they say. They say somebody told me, the disciple I told somebody that uh, I've said, I told him, listen, you know why Rav Shach leads the world, I tell you why. Because if somebody comes to Rav Shach in the morning and tells him a problem, then Rav Shach loses the appetite. He won't have, he won't have any breakfast. Somebody told me this today, the chief is of Gershon Elshin, a Bari. So he has to rest. He's only 99 years old. He has to rest. So the afternoon he rests. He told his grandchildren, don't let anybody come to talk to me now. <coughs> Because if somebody comes to talk to me and he'll tell me his problem, I won't be able to fall asleep. That's what it means after Chakamocha. That's what it means Mashiach. That a person should feel for his friend, it's not I feel for you, or, I, I comfort you, I respect you. It's, it's me. You and me, let's say. Just a minute, Rabbi Akiva. Right, Spirat Aumen, what did you do? I'll tell you what you do. You just did not give respect to each other. So for this, don't die. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Because Tamit Chacha means that you have to feel for everybody. And if you don't respect him, it means you don't respect yourself. Don't respect yourself, it means you don't consider him part of you. The opposite of creation. When Hashem created Adam HaRishon, he made sure that's going to happen. And as David Amir said, he says, I love my son. This is Rasha Merusha. He can't call him Afshalom. He can't call his son Afshalom. He is at the seventh level of Gehenom. The worst of the worst. David Amir says, I wish I would die for you. I wish I would die for you. You, David Amir, are a tzaddik. Your son is a low life. Trash. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. I can't, I can't see somebody else in Gehenna. I can't see it, I can't see it. It doesn't matter who it is, I can't see it. It means I'm a Gehenna, that's the way I feel. It's not my son is Gehenna, I'm Gehenna, I'm Gehenna. Let the Bimela say. And that's exactly what Hashem did. If somebody is sick, somebody else comes and he's in the same Neshama like him. Unintentionally, he already pick up one sixtieth of the sickness. Because it's automatic. Because you and him is automatic now here. So just by visiting him, immediately you help him indirectly, directly, immediately it's going to happen to him. And that's exactly what happened when the Gemara says, that was the Machloket between Hillel and Shammai. The guy came to Shammai and says, I want to convert while playing on one foot. And Shammai pushed him away and says, it's impossible. It's impossible. Impossible to reach that level. I mean, that level is the level of creation. Adam and Shammai was cursed with ten curses just because he did not reach that level. He did not, he did, he did not understand it, maybe. That's the hardest thing in the world. So how can you convert on one foot? He has said, listen, I'll tell you what. I'll translate that sentence, but not as a positive act, as, as a passive act. A negative thing. Don't do it to your friend. It's, it's good enough. I mean, don't do it. Do, what do you mean don't do it to my friend? Of course I won't do it. Don't understand. 
I didn't mean literally just don't do to your friends something that you hate. It means like this. If you do to your friends something that you don't like to be done to you, it means you don't feel for him. It's not Allah. It's not Allah. Don't do something to your friend that you don't want this to happen to you. That's, that's very simple. No. It means the feeling that you should have. Ha, huh, is possible that I will do something to someone that I don't like. It's not, I'm not allowed to do it. No, it's not you're not allowed, you're allowed to. It means the feeling that you have will not let you to do such a thing. Because how, how are you going to do such a thing? Again, it's almost the same thing, but it's just an easier way because it's on a passive way. We don't ask you to absorb and to go to somebody and say, listen, accept the sorrow that God has. No, I don't, this is maybe too high for him. He just said to the, to the God, no. Shammai was right. It's not a Shammai was right. The, the level that you should reach all your life is you should feel for somebody and you should be so called the sacrifice for him. But it's impossible to tell God to do it. So he said, you know what, I'll tell you something else. Just feel for someone that what you don't like sh that you think should be done to you, feel that you don't want to do it to somebody else. Not, don't do it. Don't do it is easy. Who is it? We're not talking about anyone. We're talking about the concept that you have in your head. That's the concept. You cannot do such a thing. And this, that's what Hilo said to the guy. If you, if you reach that, it's good enough. Because if Adam Rishon would have had it, he would not have told like, oh, my wife. What do you mean my wife? It means you don't feel for anyone. What do you think when you talk when you talk about my wife? What do you think what's gonna happen? Probably Akadosh Baruch will punish your wife. How could you tell Akadosh Baruch Hu that he should punish somebody else? That's what Hiller explained to the Goy. And this is this is what. What happened? Huh? Huh? Ah, Baruch Hashem. That's what Hillel explained to the guy, that this is our goal in life. And this is Firat Omar all about. To reach that level, they came to our Sinai, they said, Na seven Ishma. Na seven Ishma. What, what, what did you say? No, we became one unit. What one unit? We accepted on ourselves at least what Hillel told the Goy. No one will ever do to his friend something that he doesn't like should be done to him. That's the highest level in person. But not because he's not allowed. Because you feel inside, how is it possible I'll do it? And this is this is what Zohar says, Mishavuot at the Mepek Megaluta. Of course, we should have came out of exile on the first night of Pesach, as the Gemara says. But Zohar says, give another date. And I said, what was the other date? Well, the redemption in Egypt was because Hashem picked us out of Egypt. The redemption on Shavuot. Is because we're going to reach that level to be united. We're united. We're very, very united. It means we should have in our head at least what Hiller said. And that is Yeshua. Chabu Atzavi Mephaim Anachlo. Navi says, Nabi Yosha said, listen, if you're all united, Hashem will not do anything to you. Because you fixed the sin of Adam Arishon. The sin was not that he ate. The sin was that he embarrassed his wife. The sin was that he didn't care for his wife. The thing was that he did not accomplish what Hashem did to him, made an operation on him. The wife is part of it. It's impossible to argue with your wife, to fight with your wife. It's impossible. She should argue with It's impossible. It's impossible. But that's why what he did. What did. But look what Chava did. She hit me. What if she gave me to eat? She wanted me dead because she, she didn't want me to marry somebody else. She's so cruel. Doesn't matter. Absalom. So cool. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You and him is one part. You don't punish your hand because your hand did something to yourself. And we have it. Amen. 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 <coughs>